Poplar Island is a good place to learn about marsh ecology because it's a, a system that's been built from the ground up and to build that sort of system you have to understand how the natural system works. The purpose of the project is to replace wetland and upland habitat that's been lost by the erosion of islands in Chesapeake Bay and also as a, a placement site for the dredge material. Dredge material comes from the approach channels to Baltimore Harbor, which is uh, necessary to keep the uh, shipping industry viable. So it's considered clean material, it's not highly contaminated. So they barge it in. This is where they offload the dredge material. You know, they tie up the barge and then they have enormous pipes that they run across the whole island to wherever they're depositing the dredge material at that time. They move a lot of substrate around out here. The plants growing on dredge material are very lush, very tall, and they're very much like highly fertilized agricultural crops, but the stems are not as strong as they might otherwise be under lower nutrient conditions, and so they fall over. What we've seen repeatedly at Poplar Island is that the marsh experiences diebacks um, on varying scales. And we think that's related directly to the nutrient-rich substrate. So it starts out very compact and very firm. You can feel that when you walk on the marsh. But as it ages and the roots and rhizomes penetrate the dredge material, it becomes softer. This is pretty squishy. You're gonna go for it? Okay. If the plants are not producing as much root and shoot tissue, you may not have as much accretion going on in the marsh. And that is important because the marsh elevation must keep up with sea level rise. Roots and rhizomes stabilize the sediment. They help uh, protect the shoreline against erosion, so lots of below ground biomass production makes the marsh more resilient. Less below ground biomass production makes that marsh more susceptible to erosion. So there's been some erosion in here. Our old site would actually be in the water now. We measure percent cover and canopy height, that's the, the height of the tallest stems. And we measure that annually, so at the end of every growing season we go back to the same places in the marsh and measure those two things over and over again. The quadrat that we use is divided up into 25 squares. We place that over the marsh, and then we count the number of squares that have rooted vegetation in them. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And that gives us an estimate of percent cover. I think that would be 24. We measure canopy height using a simple metric yardstick. We do that at the same location each year in September or October. And that way we can track changes in the marsh. One of the valuable lessons I think we're learning at Poplar Island is how marsh systems respond to nutrient inputs but this is a really good example of using a restoration or a creation project to learn about the ecology of the system.